history has been made yesterday. I, uh, Subhan Isaac has been interviewed by an MIT scientist for over four hours. Yes, the MIT scientist took Subhan Isaac interview for almost five hours. History has been made here in the United States yesterday. When we talk about MIT scientists, we are talking about the biggest, most prestige, prestigious engineering university in the world, in the whole world. So the MIT scientists began by uh, asking Isaac a bunch of questions about his book uh, on light and black holes. So the first question he asked was, what is light? Yes, the first question he asked Shogun Isaac, what is light? And Shogun Isaac started using I, um, Sir Isaac Newton contribution in light, explaining how Sir Isaac Newton uses white light and, and separating them using prism. And Isaac also explained how Maxwell contributed to. Uh, the properties of light. Yes, he also had to prove the Maxwell hypothesis, E equal to HF. And at one point, he made a joke. He said that Maxwell, who was in love with, just like everyone else, Sir Isaac Newton, had a hard time walking away from Newtonian mechanics. Had a hard time walking away from classical mechanics had a hard time saying no at the face of Sir Isaac Newton. He had a very hard time. So, Shubhan Isaac said it took him five hours to write H. Five hours to write H. So, Shubhan Isaac spent entire half an hour to prove the Planck hypothesis. And then Isaac uh, talked about how light behaves. Does it behave like a particle or like a wave? Oh no, before that, uh, he uh, he also, uh, the scientist asked, MIT scientist asked to prove the Bohr contribution, to show Bohr contribution on light. Ask him to explain how I asked him to explain the energy levels uh, from to calculate the energy levels from N1 to N5. And then Isaac related the Bohr model to the current model of the atom. And then Isaac and then MIT scientists asked him to prove how much energy the electron has to gain to jump up from ground state yeah. to N5. And then Isaac explained using mathematics the color of the light emitted by the electron when it jumps back to its ground state. Yes, and MIT scientists ask him, okay, now, yes, electron like to be excited state. Now, where does electron gain those energy from? So he had to prove the photoelectron effect. Don't forget that Einstein won the Nobel Prize not for general theory of relativity but for the photoelectric effect. For photoelectric effect. So Shubhan Isaac had to prove photoelectric effect and how electrons gain energy from photon coming from a flashlight, for example, it has to be right type of light with the right type of frequency that knock loose electron sitting on a metal bounded to nucleus, and he had to prove that. So then, after Isaac explained uh, the photoelectric effect, he uh, also explained the properties of light. Uh, does it behave like a particle or wave? And well, before yeah. that, <coughs> before that, Shubhan Isaac had to, uh, the scientists asked him to calculate the frequency 
the flight when it jumps down from N3 to N2. And he also asked Isaac to find the wavelength of the light emitted by the electron when it jumps from N3 to N2. That's, that's correct. So once Isaac had the frequency and wavelength, the scientists, MIT scientists asked him to prove that the speed of light is actually 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. And Isaac did that. And no. Proving that using C equal to F times lambda. And magic happened. It was exactly 3 times 10 raised to 8. Not more, not less. And after Isaac uh, proved that C is equal to F times lambda, he started, um, he started explaining how Newton used light as a wave in his equation. Now, how Einstein used light as a particle in his photoelectric effect because Einstein had to use light as a particle, not as a wave to calculate, to show that <coughs> the photoelectron has kinetic energy and the photoelectron has therefore a velocity and you cannot have kinetic energy and velocity if you don't have mass so light Einstein considered as particle just like Sir Isaac Newton and show that the light has a kinetic energy, photoelectric, photoelectron. Photoelectron has a kinetic energy and velocity, and Shubhan Isaac had to prove it. Prove the cesium. Electron coming out from cesium, uh, from cesium metal, he had to prove that. <laughs> and then uh, the MIT uh, scientist asked Isaac uh, about black holes, right? Um, uh, Yes, a black hole. Shubhan, he asked Shubhan Isaac that the light, there is nothing mightier than light, but except black hole. It's, still light cannot escape the black hole. So he asked Shubhan Isaac to show probe that light cannot escape the black hole. And he also asked Isaac uh, to not only prove that light couldn't escape a black hole, but to uh, show how light behaves around the black hole. Uh, and then the MIT scientist asked Shubhan Isaac to prove that the light cannot move faster than 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Uh -huh. And then he asked Isaac um, what size the Earth would have to be become a black hole. And then he asked Shubhan Isaac to calculate escape the escape velocity, uh, escape velocity of our, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, that turned out to be around uh, 11,000 meters per second. Yes, 11,000 uh, meter per second. It's very important, it's very important because NASA uses all the time escape, vel yeah. escape velocity of our to send rocket. To send to rocket. Yeah. Uh, so Isaac had to use the kinetic energy and potential energy to calculate the escape velocity of art. And then MIT scientists ask him to calculate. Oh no, to turn the R to a black hole. Oh yeah. You can turn R to a black hole if you accomplish Thinking. one thing. And that is shrink our radius yeah. from 6.4 to the 10 raised to 6 to 9 times 10 raised to negative 3 meters. So the R current radius is big. If you can make it small, then indeed you can make R to a black hole. How is small? You have to make the R it's smaller than the size of a peanut. Yeah. That can be possible if you can make the arc radius to a short tail radius. And that's exactly what Shubhan Isaac did using 
mathematics. And then the MIT physicist asked Isaac to uh, calculate the force of the gravitational pull of a black Yes. Hole. He asked Shubhan Isaac mm -hmm. to show that why you cannot survive on black hole. Yeah. It's because the gravitational pull is too strong. Nothing, not even light, survive near the black hole is because here, for example, I am 70 kilograms. So what is the gravitational pull? What is the gravitational pull, Albert, uh, on, on me? 700 Newton. 700 Newton. So 700 Newton is fine. I can walk. I can talk. I can run. I can even dance. But if I turn to be a black hole, <laughs> the gravitational pull on me is going to be 10 raised to positive 19 Newton. Stretch like a spaghetti. Yes, spaghettification. 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 Yes, spaghettification. So it happens so quickly that your head is smashed before, <laughs> before your legs. Before your legs. So. The world has never seen this type of thing before. A six-year-old sat down with MIT scientist yeah. to prove some of the cutting-edge problem of physics. Only few people understand those concepts. Yeah. And he did it with great enthusiasm. Now, today we're going to release that interview. and. Why then we are promoting it? We are promoting it is because we want to create Shubhan Noizak every single home around the world, maybe except in Bangladesh. <laughs> okay. We want to create, we want to inspire every single children in the world to be like Shubhan Noizak. This is the only way we can change the world. This is the only way we can make, we can accelerate our human progress. So when we release this interview, we hope, we are hoping that every school, every college, every university will show this interview to their student, except maybe in Bangladesh. <laughs> So uh, we hope you uh, stay tuned for that because this really is a historic interview. Uh, MIT physicist asking a six-year-old uh, questions even most people with doctors cannot answer. So this is a very big deal and uh, we hope you tune in for the video today. We do hope you tune in and you fall in love with math and science. Thank you.